Hello everyone, welcome to my stream. I'm George. Uh, you can find me as uh, Walkero in various uh, Amiga forums. Uh, how is everyone? Welcome. And um, it's Friday. Uh, it's about all about Amiga. Hello, Ars Amiga. Hello, SLT Snake. Welcome to the stream. It's all about Amiga and it's all about Morphos this stream as well. Uh, in, um, it's one more uh, Morphos stream coming after uh, in this series that I'm doing to get uh, know better uh, the Morphos operating system and the application. So today we are going to have a look on Morphos as well. And um, we have a lot of applications to, to visit because we are going to see uh, applications that have to do with uh, graphics and uh, design and things like that. Uh, how is everyone in the chat? You can hear me uh, well. Please tell me if there is a problem with the sound. And uh, yeah. Uh, SLT Snake says it seems that we are going to have that uh, tiny GL for Morphos. That uh, is a very nice um, uh, thing. Uh, that uh, they started this bounty for the tiny GL. I didn't contribute yet, but I'm going to do. Uh, and yeah, it's it's a very positive thing to to have it in, in Morphos. Hello, AJ, JMA80. Welcome to the stream. Good evening to you. So it's we are uh, almost in uh, weekend. So after work, the best thing to do is to work uh, to do stuff with your beloved uh, Amigas. We're going to see um, the design programs, the uh, image processing programs that we can use on Morphos, the ones that I'm uh, proposing. And we are going to see some 3D um, applications as well. You already see in uh, my window that I have uh, over there open the, the list of the applications that we are going to talk about. But before that, I would like to um, mention that the previous uh, stream that we did and the, the, this stream that we'll do today uh, is a good opportunity to talk about the, uh, the Amiga Art Contest that is going to happen and was announced a few days ago. Uh, this is happening w by uh, my, uh, by Douglas and uh, Douglas Compton and uh, um, Invent uh, and uh, he they are. Let me show you the um, Amiga artwork. That's the website, the official uh, website. So 10 Mark Amiga and uh, Invent 71, they are uh, organizing together the um, uh, this year uh, Amiga Art uh, Contest. So if you would like that to, to create something on your uh, Morphos system, uh, you can do it. Uh, and uh, today we are going to have a look on uh, some of the applications that you could use. So uh, here is the, the website and uh, I think that's uh, going to be open for uh, your submissions until October, the middle of October. And uh, you can see here some uh, of the artwork that people um, sent the previous years and uh, the, the, the winners as well. So have a look and if you are interested on something like that, uh, the website is amigaartwork.com So uh, let's move on because we have a lot of applications to, to have a look. Uh, there are a lot of applications to do uh, graphics, to, do, to, to paint or to um, uh, manipulate your uh, photos. And we can't uh, have a look on all of them, right? 
because otherwise we would need <laughs> a lot of hours of uh, streaming so uh, I choose uh, a few of them that I believe are the best and uh, feel free to, to propose to me other applications as well at the chat if you have another uh, application that you use mostly on uh, Morphos so uh, we are going to start with uh, an application that is exclusive for Morphos this is called Taint and uh, this one uh, is a simple application and uh, it's mostly for painting uh, something let's say something like um, uh, of course uh, as I said on previous uh, streams I am not the, the most artistic person to design or uh, sketch something but you see that is uh, a good application exclusively for uh, Morphos uh, something like uh, what would you do with um, let's say deluxe paint or anything like that and you have a lot of um, options to create let's say a cycle or uh, an ellipse or a square and I'm sure there is going to be a way to do it uh, you can have a fill here, the color, and create something with uh, the second color. Here you have the uh, the palette, so you can select for the foreground to have something like in green, and in background to have something in red. So if I do that, it's going to be uh, red because I have selected here the the field to be uh, the big color it's pretty simple it's uh, uh, still maintained i believe and um, this is uh, exclusive for um, morphos you have the option to use uh, layers like uh, you can do on uh, photoshop or other uh, or gimp in other systems uh, and uh, create layers of uh, images one above the other so you can delete a layer and create something else uh, it's a nice uh, application to have a look and uh, yeah the the next one that i would like to show you since we started with paint applications let's go to have a look on uh, most of the paint applications that are coming from uh, the classic Amiga 68K uh, software uh, that we have available. Uh, most of the applications, the 68K uh, applications are going to work quite well, but there might be some uh, trivia on configuring them to work well on, um, um, on Morphos, uh, except those that are uh, opening um, double screens in the same screen or uh, those that are bugging a lot the uh, custom chipsets of uh, Amiga I have some of them to, to show you uh, today let's start with perfect paint you can select of course the uh, resolution that you uh, like to, to work on and let's see oh in valid format okay if it is in valid format that's that's a problem of my um, upscaler that i'm using it doesn't recognize the format of the um, of the uh, screen mode that it opened so let me see if i can uh, find a way to to run it in a different screen mode let me see how about that 
Okay. So this is perfect paint. And let's create a new image. And okay. The, the colors are a little bit off, maybe because it is a 24 bit. Uh, screen color here and maybe that's the reason why we have this pinky um, uh, gadgets at this window but uh, this doesn't stop us from uh, doing some stuff and design or paint in uh, uh, perfect paint of course perfect paint is much better than what I'm doing right now right you can do a lot of stuff with it I'm just not that experienced with uh, this application and um, yeah you can select a field box for example or change the color right, like that and you have at the bottom different images that you can use to create um, something like uh, to have them something like uh, different uh, layers and uh, create something uh, good uh, something from in a single uh, screen as you can see um, perfect paint is working quite well most of the applications that I'm uh, showing you today are going to be are available in morphostorage.net uh, so you can find and download them from there uh, at least those that are uh, free uh, other applications like the image effects that we are going to see later they these are not um, uh, available uh, to download you have to have them uh, bought uh, or find them anywhere else and uh, this is uh, perfect paint working well uh, other than that you can use the personal paint which for this machine it's a little bit tricky to work well let's see how it will uh, work yeah because right now it opened in a different my my other uh, screen on the laptop so let me see if I can switch to the other screen and see if, it, if that will work for you. Wait. Uh, personal paint, this version is the version that is available uh, free of charge, um, the older version that's uh, 7.1 c if i'm not wrong as you can see i uh, there are some issues uh, for example the, here with the resizing of the gadgets but i think that as you can see in general this uh, application doesn't cooperate quite well with uh, Morphos and uh, also if you open uh, images are not uh, loading in the right palette and uh, there are uh, some issues so I wouldn't recommend to, to use P-Paint at all uh, because uh, the only thing it's running it's running it might be an issue with these um, uh, screen uh, format or screen resolution that uh, it opened uh, that has some issues and uh, let's see if it has any way to to set something different no no so um personal paint is is problematic at least the old one I don't know, I haven't tried the, the version that Aeon is, uh, uh, had released a few days, a few years ago, but uh, it might work well, but it is commercial, so I don't have it uh, to show you uh, right now. The other application, TV Paint, I think that works much better. Let's have a look. 
and yeah TV paint works much better really fast on doing stuff uh, for example create a, that or let's load uh, a picture let me see how I can do it from here no that's filters um, yeah load let me see what we have our volumes locations pictures something that is not really huge if I find something here uh, no file and let's try this one no unknown file format maybe the file names uh, resize image okay let's see how it looks um, SLT Snake says, yes, I think the latest versions are updated for this system, for these systems. You mean the latest versions for, for the personal paint? As I said, I haven't tried that because I don't have it. So yeah, if it works, that uh, would be great. So as you can see, it can open uh, quite uh, nice uh, images and uh, you can after that you can do uh, apply some uh, filters or uh, do something with them for example uh, let me see okay obviously i don't know how to use it but there is a way to to do stuff and like that nice it's a very nice um, application and um, I have to spend some t more time with it and try to to do uh, more interesting uh, stuff than squares right and the thing is that with TV paint you can uh, work with uh, 24 bit uh, images and above and it's a uh, very nice uh, paint program. Uh, SLD Snake says I meant uh, P Paint. Yeah, I don't have the latest version either. Yeah, uh, possible. Uh, I know that they made a PPC version and they made the updated the 68K uh, version, but I'm not sure if the that version would work uh, well with the morphos uh, let's see what else here we have tools okay we can change the tool that we use to paint and we can change the size as well like that and create something so uh, TV paint is working very nice uh, in, it, it is quite compatible with Morphos you can find it on Morphos storage and download it I think it needs a couple of um, extra libraries that you are going to find on uh, the Aminet when you try to start uh, the application, if uh, those libraries are not available, 
uh, it asks you for them so you can um, provide the libraries from Aminet, download them and provide them uh, and uh, other than that we have also uh, FX Paying a commercial application that is not available anymore to, to buy um, so you can create a new image here create and start I guess painting something like that or load an, a photo and play with them uh, pictures this one which is huge but it uh, loads uh, really fast and you can uh, apply here some filters on change the colors and there is a, a category in the uh, art contest Amiga art contest that has to do with uh, the photograph and uh, which you can uh, take a photo with your mobile or with uh, your camera and bring it here in uh, your Morpho system and uh, change the color or uh, change the some parts of it and uh, uh, send that as your artistic application so uh, these streams are not meant to uh, teach anyone how to use those applications just I would like to show you that uh, they are working and uh, you can use them uh, the FX Paint is working fine uh, the Art Effect is working also uh, quite well I think yesterday I tested that and it was working so let's see so there are some issues as you can see here there are no buttons let's see if that uh, gets better okay <coughs> settings program settings and it freezed let me have a reboot yeah artifact is an application that should work well um, Yesterday I tried it and uh, I could uh, do some uh, uh, stuff there, uh, like some um, filters, but it is uh, it's not that stable under Morphos, unfortunately. And um, of course, those applications are quite old, right? And they are not maintained anymore. So. Um, and because they are based on 68k uh, code uh, th there is a, this emulator that uh, Morphos has uh, that is used to uh, make these uh, applications work let's try that again ignore okay that seems much better you see here for example there is a, a bug of the the shape you see that those lines here but that's not a big problem i guess okay and let's open an image cancel Let's try to open the same image like uh, we did before and see how it works in um, uh, Artifact. So here, pictures, this one. Execute out of memory. Yeah, because Let's see if we increase this. If that makes any sense. Uh, 
uh, Artifact is one of the best applications, 68K applications to um, make your images, to, to, pro, uh, to change things on your images. Uh, as you can see, it works. And now that uh, we added more uh, memory, this bug here is fixed. So that's good. It's a matter uh, of uh, configuration, of course. And you can see it's quite fast. Let's No, we don't. Okay. But there are a few bugs. <laughs> um, hello, Emek. Welcome to the stream. Uh, today we see some uh, applications that have to do with uh, graphics and uh, design and uh, photo process and things like that. Right now we have uh, Artifact. It kind works uh, but it has some issues right now for example seems that is uh, blocked and we can't uh, move on let's close that let's reboot and see the next one and yeah m most of the times um, the applications need some um, good configuration uh, experiment a little bit uh, and you might have them uh, work quite well um, it depends on the application and how well it was uh, developed and don't forget also that uh, the big difference between uh, uh, amiga os4 and uh, morphos is the rtg system that they are using where um, Amiga OS 4 is using the Picasso and Morphos is using the Cyber Graphics. So if the application that was developed back then uh, doesn't support well both of these uh, systems, then one of them might have uh, issues uh, and they might not be that stable or uh, it might uh, have um, uh, bugs that uh, prevents that from working well. Artifact is is one of them, uh, but on the other side, the uh, image effects. It opens and works quite well. Uh, let me see if I have something to. Yeah, let's load a, a screenshot. No. From a PNG image. Remember that uh, image effects, uh, as uh, all of these applications, are 68K. So if the emulation that is uh, created for these operating systems is not 100% uh, accurate, then uh, there might be uh, crashes or uh, problems. So, yeah, image effects works well. Let's apply something to see. Uh, a filter or something here L first let's select the box and then apply blur okay as you can see the the effect is applied let's create another box here or here and have a preview you see that the preview is working fine and like that okay and it's quite fast image effects is uh, the most stable um, image processing application with a lot of features that i would propose to use in any operating uh, amiga operating system 
and um, there are a lot of options as well you have layers and things like that and uh, yeah that's uh, that's an awesome application so if you have it or if you can buy it in uh, ebay or somewhere else um, ebay and things like that and uh, websites like that i would uh, recommend you uh, to do it because it's a, a tremendous uh, application let's see something else like if preview okay that's perfect so we created something for the amiga art contest <laughs> so yeah uh, image effect seems to work quite well and you can it and it supports a lot of uh, image formats so you can use it to crop images and thing, uh, do anything you want with it i don't know if uh, you uh, have used image effects before and what is your experience with it if you like it or not uh, okay and uh, yeah it is quite powerful and uh, let's see next so we saw uh, let's see some uh, other applications like amifig this is uh, an application that is uh, that you can use to create um, uh, graphics that are not bitmap uh, like that and then you can go if i'm not wrong let me see let's create a devil that's a devil perfect and you can go and change the image um, because those images are raster images and you can uh, change them uh, at any time they are based on um, mathematics they are not a bitmap like you set a specific pixel what color is right so you can do things like um, you can change them at any time and of also you can um, uh, resize them without uh, losing any um, quality because the as i said is based on mathematics so you can uh, change their size without uh, losing the the quality now i uh, let's try and open something from the examples i don't know if, if this is going to work or if this is going to uh, crash but let's have a look uh, let's do that and okay okay and it seems that it crashed cancel no okay no here nothing yeah it seems that the the loading of uh, files is crashing again it might be um, something that has to do with the configuration uh, of course we have thank god the the forums and people who uh, might have a better um, uh, solution for this to make it uh, work and uh, whenever you have such issues there go at the morph zone and uh, put there a thread create a thread and ask guys i have that problem what uh, if you if there is a solution for that and uh, yeah after after that let's have a look on another a cad application quite old as well but quite useful which is created by Maxon. The version that I have here is the German one, so uh, I am not sure. Um, 
most of the things what they say and uh, let's see assign okay and yeah it's one of the only applications that start at the right but let's open something i think here this one yeah so you can see uh, how it looks the um, it's a CAD application where it is mostly for uh, professional use I don't know if it is um, something that someone would use today I guess not <laughs> but if you if you would like to do something uh, with CAD this is available and you can do it I think it is possible to find the English translation or the English version but um, I couldn't find it and yeah here as well the graphics are, are vector graphics so you see that as long as you uh, you can zoom and it doesn't break the image and uh, yeah it, it has a lot of options to, to create something with that SLD Snake says uh, I used the uh, image effects and others back in the day I don't remember so much the specific work done with it yeah yeah, image effects is the, is the best. <laughs> uh, MXS, I use images on uh, or FX Paint for simple things. Uh, FX Paint also is uh, very nice. I think that um, it doesn't. It lacks a lot of uh, features. Artifact has a lot of uh, effects, but it is not that stable. Uh, maybe the problem with Artifact is the the usage of the uh, virtual memory which is not necessary for these systems because uh, most of them have a lot of memory right now and somewhere there I believe it's, it's a problem and uh, I, I'm not sure if it is possible to, to shut it down completely and there are no effects yeah we will see there are no effects uh, afterwards after that because it is very nice application uh, I wish I could uh, do more creative stuff says Emek and I agree with that Emek because I don't I'm not able to create anything as you have seen uh, anything like uh, a design or something like that and I'm completely useless <laughs> to design something so yeah, but the, the people who uh, are looking for something, sometimes they don't know what is uh, available. That's why I'm doing that uh, stream today to show at least some of the applications that are available and you can use. Um, possible, you are not going to, if you want just to crop an image uh, that you found online and you just want to do to, to make it smaller you don't need to open uh, image effects although that it opens quite uh, fast and it's a really fast application but image effects has uh, features like uh, you can have an Im a photo that is uh, having a green screen at the back and change that with something else which is quite interesting uh, to experiment with uh, I don't expect that it's going to be the quality is going to be uh, like other applications that we find in other uh, platforms but it's it's a good thing to to play with um, think for example creating something in a 3d um, application like the ones that we are going to see in a moment and uh, merge it with the a photo that you have um, a green screen there with image effects you can do it and uh, replace uh, the 3d image with uh, and put it inside the uh, the photo uh, that you want if you experiment you can do tremendous uh, things SLD Snake says I remember photogenics and art effect more or less like an old photoshop yeah the the artifact tried to imitate the uh, look and feel of uh, Photoshop a lot. That's why you have the toolbar 
at the left and you have uh, pretty much the same uh, uh, items and you can create your own uh, brushes and things like that uh, Photogenics on the other hand is having a completely different um, um, U UI which some people find it um, difficult to, to learn okay and uh, but it's it's working quite well here on Morphos or let me open an image uh, cancel okay applications my this because we don't need it photogenics is also um, quite uh, stable I hope that it doesn't prove me wrong <laughs> but and it has a lot of uh, effects the flame effects uh, it was uh, the greatest thing that we have seen with uh, photogenics uh, I think uh, let me change here the color something like that and you can also select here um, let's say that and as you can see I am applying this um, filter right to the, the image and you can change here the uh, options the GUI that uh, Photogenics has is quite interesting and uh, maybe it's the only application that has something like that uh, for the Amica because you can grab something from here if I'm not wrong or let me see yeah you can grab something and move it to, uh, to the, a different place like that and you can also create a separated window to put it wherever you want and this was something that uh, I have seen also in uh, GIMP in the old uh, at the older um, versions of GIMP where you could uh, get whatever uh, it is on your um, application and move it to different windows uh, that's uh, something that uh, Photogenics does quite well and you can separate it and I think you can bring it back if you want like that and close that and you are uh, back like you want it uh, and yeah you can do a lot of different things for example here if we go and change the filter I think we can apply that no uh, and you can play with it and make it look better whatever you want whatever inspires you and whatever you would like to see in the application so yeah photogenics is working quite well and also it has if you want to crop something you can click on that click uh, where is it crop and you have the image cropped sometimes things like that is <laughs> you search in various places to find something like that and photogenics does it so easily so yeah and this is the uh, 5.0 version that was released back in uh, 1995 uh, also photogenics was commercial so you are not going to find it somewhere uh, free to download it uh, so let's see some uh, other applications like RNO effects 
This is one of the latest applications that is uh, released. Uh, it is based on uh, Hollywood. And uh, let's open something. It's a simple application to do something uh, fast and uh, have a good uh, uh, a good outcome from that. So we are going to open this image. As you can see, I can resize it and it keeps the aspect uh, of the image. If you don't want it, you can change it here and anyway you can resize it and of course here in the menu there are a lot of different effects that you can apply uh, to the image uh, like uh, let's do edge not something big let's see how it goes and of course this image is uh, huge is uh, something like um, almost 4k uh, resolution it's 3000 yeah here it is 3840 to 2160 and we created that <laughs> how about it uh, so if the image of course is big it takes more time to to do it so we created the butterflies at night and um, it has other tools like image joiner batch converter batch converter is nice because you can select many applications that you have uh, many photos pictures whatever you have and apply specific uh, filters uh, what you need there and let it do the all the work uh, Aris Amika says, uh, George, I think you might be skipping frames. Yeah, really? Uh, right now the OBS shows me that the stream is fine. But uh, yeah, it might be because uh, my uh, Wi-Fi is occupied. I don't know. And uh, yeah, that's... Let's see what else we have here. And of course, you can save uh, the image in different formats. Uh, this is created by JTV. Uh, we have uh, talked about him before in this stream and how many uh, cool applications he creates. So if uh, you are using his applications, I would recommend to uh, support him. And uh, let's see further and let's go to something like uh, 3D applications. One of the most powerful applications uh, that I would uh, recommend for Morphos is of course Blender. Uh, the version that is ported here is uh, 2600 something like that. Let's see. Two, yeah, 2.62 and it is working quite well. I can't do many things on that because I don't know how to, to use it. Uh, I prefer to use uh, mostly um, uh, 3D applications uh, that come from Amiga. But uh, since a Blender is working, uh, you can do a lot of uh, things that you can find on um, uh, the internet and follow some uh, very good um, tutorials that you can find in YouTube for example and also uh, Blender is a very nice application to use if you want to create a movie because it has here uh, the video sequencer for example uh, where you can put um, videos that you have on your system and create, uh, blend them, and uh, do some effects on uh, changing from one video to another, and create a, a, a final video at the end. Uh, let me see if you, oh, I think you can, here you can have a, mov a movie clipped editor, and 
you can change uh, and you can even use blender just for uh, video editing for example uh, it is quite powerful but the main uh, thing for blender is to create 3d uh, images let me see if there is any demo in here no i don't see any demo so yeah i don't know how to use blender because i didn't put a lot of time on that and the as you can see the uh, ui is quite different uh, from a lot of applications so i'm not sure how to to use it properly uh, but yeah if you want if you are experienced with blender or you would like something more uh, up to date uh, it is uh, available for Morphos and is working quite well uh, in uh, Amiga OS 4 we have a blender as well uh, but it is uh, an older version than uh, this one uh, other than that you could uh, use um, Cinema 4D, Lightwave and Real 3D. Let's start on the less uh, cute one, which for me is Real 3D. Uh, it is quite difficult to um, configure it to work well, uh, but I have uh, created a configuration that seems to work. And let's see how it looks like. Um, here you have all your uh, objects, tools, more buttons. I don't know what they are doing. Let's um, import a, a project, insert. Let's see, dices here. And from this face here you have the the views you have four different views also um, real 3d version 3 that's the one that we uh, see okay. right now there is a way to have a totally different uh, layout you can have uh, the, the mostly used uh, four uh, views where you have the sides and the top uh, here is the top view and the side views and the front view and here you have the 3d view of the items uh, or you can have a totally different uh, way to, to to make it work for you uh, if you are uh, more experienced with um, real 3d you can make it work exactly as you want and or if you want to have the the windows in a different place you can do it let's see now uh, let's do a rendering so you have to select the view and go here render inside the window if you select ham it will have issues to show that because uh, Morphos as uh, well as uh, MegaOS 4 it is not able to open ham screens uh, or I didn't find so far a way to do it so we will render in the window and we have that <laughs> uh, result which I'm not sure, I, I, I bet it's not the right <laughs> result uh, it has to do with the palette of the screen and uh, no matter what I tried uh, I couldn't get a, a correct uh, result here so you can use it for a preview but then you can select to to render to a file and uh, there you have a lot of other um, options to play with let me see settings yeah a lot a lot of options to play with and you can set here the the file name where it is ram and the name of the file and you can add some post effects if you want and uh, yeah you can you can uh, use um, uh, real 3d just fine on 
your uh, Morphos. I'm not experienced with that application, unfortunately, so I can't show you more than that. But it's running. The next one is Lightwave. I bet you all have heard of uh, Lightwave. Uh, and uh, if you run it, let's run it and see how it works. Okay, invalid format. Yeah, Lightwave it opens something like a 634 to something like 400 resolution. The invalid format here that we get is because the upscaler doesn't recognize that um, resolution and doesn't show anything. And it's also quite uh, difficult to, to switch um, uh, screens uh, from Lightwave to Ambient. So I have to reboot right now and I will show you what you can do to make it work well. Um, the trick with Lightwave in most of the um, Amiga uh, machines that use uh, RTG graphics is to, to uh, promote the screen to a different screen and um, I haven't found something specific for that for the Morphos and uh, feel free to, to correct me if I'm wrong Live Lord, welcome, welcome to the stream uh, Arsamika says when rendering do different applications render things faster or it pretty much the same Faster from what? Yeah, between those applications, uh, you can't uh, compare them because they are totally different applications and they are taking a, in manage a lot of different factors. Level says late today. We'll have to pick up uh, beginning later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't worry at all. We. We have a look on uh, different graphics applications because we were talking about the Amiga Art Contest that was announced a few days ago. And uh, since we have seen how to make music and how to listen your music on previous stream, today we see how you can create some graphics, what applications are available. And we are now uh, in the 3D section, <laughs> let's say, uh, we have seen uh, most of these applications, but not the Lightwave and Cinema 4D. So we are going right now to Lightwave. I'm not an expert on Lightwave as well. Uh, for that, I would uh, recommend to have a look on YouTube on uh, uh, the channel from uh, Muadib. He has a lot of tutorials there, I think, something allowed around 50 tutorials only on Lightwave. And also Hold and Modify, the, this channel uh, is very nice on Lightwave for, very good for Lightwave for Amiga. And it has a lot of tutorials, interesting stuff to, to have a look there. So how you can uh, mode promote the Lightwave screen? Of course, uh, you can use Mode Pro, the 68K application. I have that here. Uh, let me try to run it. So when you run it, it is running at the background and you can add here a program name, the name of the uh, executable, which is Lightwave FP because it uses a uh, FPU. Uh, SLD Snake says there's a, a compilation of Lightwave from Amiga Wave. Prepare to work also a tutorial for configuration uh, for configuring the RTG screen modes for non native systems. Is it something like that? SLD Snake, can you point us to where we can find it? That's quite interesting. So uh, what I did is to open Lightwave with uh, screen mode 
So right now, uh, while uh, screen mode is running, if I double click on light wave, you will see it running quite well here. Let me open a scene. Uh, this one okay and let me see if I can move it at all this uh, scene is really uh, big and as you can see here it is struggling a little bit on this PowerBook G4 to make it faster you can go uh, here I think and reduce the number of uh, bounding box so this makes them um, it removes uh, most of the points so it makes that even faster to work with never ever ever click on render because render uh, or press the F9 uh, button because that's opening um, a screen that has two different resolutions and uh, that's not working well with uh, Morphos nor with Amiga OS 4 so we are go you are going to have a, a, a crash or you are going to have a, a, the application is going to block on that screen and you will not be able to do anything else so as uh, you might notice here some of the buttons uh, are not there anymore they are but they are a little bit hidden this is a problem that i found so far uh, happening when you screen uh, when you uh, mode promote to anything that other than 8-bit if i uh, go here on the mode pro and select the same resolution but on 8-bit like that you will see that this height is not happening anymore so and actually the uh, scrolling is much much faster so if I select something the same um, scene Let me change, rotate. You will see that it's quite faster. So I would say that it's better to select an 8-bit uh, mode. I need to experiment a little bit more, of course, and uh, check also what uh, SLD Snake mentioned about the configuring for the RTG. Uh, SLD Snake says I found a link to, to Mega for the Lightwave pack, also a PDF link for the Lightwave Plus Mode Pro uh, configuration for Morphos. Is it okay to paste it in the chat? Yeah, of course, absolutely. If uh, the chat doesn't let you for some reason, um, we can communicate and then I'm going to add that uh, link to YouTube uh, description. Now, uh, the problem that I have is with Modeler. If I try to switch to Modeler, now it works. <laughs> uh, just before the, the stream, this w uh, didn't work at all. So yeah, now it works. So I don't have any problem with Modeler. <laughs> Modeler is one of the applications that uh, supports RTD, RTG imager, uh, screens. So you can come here and select a different screen. Right now it is using the same screen that I had in um, uh, the light wave. So yeah, it, it, it can change from here. But if you start it on its own, you can select the, the screen mode 
that is uh, it can use let's okay display display options single okay let's save that to that one log like that and uh, let's try to load something yeah that's uh, one of the problems of the 8-bit uh, screen that the the requester is awful <laughs> uh, so let me go back and see if i can find an object to do load okay applications graphics nightwave objects Teapot, for example, let's load this one. Okay, a wow, and let's see if we can have the screen here. As you can see, you can change the sizes, it works quite well and it's fast. And options preview type solid. And you can see the the item, the object, from every angle here. Of course, here there are the layers, and that's as far as I know. <laughs> so, how you can render? Since the um, the render button is not working, what I recommend is to use let me switch uh, close that quick get uh, get out of uh, lightwave and with lightwave there is an application called lwsn um, dot fp this is lightwave screen net dot fp with fpu and you can use that uh, from terminal to render something so let's let's do Let's do it. Uh, so let me get in that. Okay. And let me remember the output. Okay. Yeah, how you can do it. So actually, that's exactly the same uh, way I'm doing that on. Uh, Amiga OS 4 and I have in YouTube one um, video that is doing um, the rendering of some benchmark uh, scenes and uh, you can find it on uh, YouTube where you can find exactly how much time uh, an X5000 needs to, to render these pages, these uh, uh, scenes and um, you can see exactly the uh, typing, the usage of this uh, tool. Uh, so it's minus three the uh, we have that here since a uh, benchmark okay ray trace seven okay let's try that that's what uh, that's a few of my yeah seven and seven is i think it's the uh if i remember correct is the starting uh, frame to the end frame so as you can see here it is starting to uh, rendering you have all the uh, the results and you see here the CPU time, the CPU uh, usage is uh, at the top, 100% almost, because it is rendering. So let's give it some time and see how it goes. Uh, SLD Snake added the URLs at the chat, guys. If you want, grab them. Uh, I will surely grab them and have a look, because Lightwave is a great uh, application and 
if you want to create something beautiful, uh, Lightwave is one of the uh, best applications to do that on Amiga and Morphos as well. The other is the Cinema 4D, which I kindly um, uh, prefer mostly, and we will see later why. As you can see, here it says rendering frame 7, 7 and 7 that we put on the uh, here in the command. And uh, yeah, you can use this uh, method to render the whole uh, um, animation that you might create uh, into a higher um, um, resolution, of course the resolution that the image is going to be uh, rendered all this stuff are saved in scene in the scene so you have to set this all this stuff in uh, lightwave and then close lightwave and come here and uh, render the, the the screen it's close to the the end i guess Oh no, it has a lot of passes. So uh, I'm going to stop it, if possible, because it will take a lot of time. I might create an, a different um, uh, video for YouTube to see uh, exactly the, the time of the rendering for the benchmark. That would be interesting to see how much time it will get on uh, this power book and also on x5000 does it make sense for you uh, slt snake says i followed those pdf steps with morphos and amethylon i assume they will work with os4 too yeah okay Th then i will uh, of course i will uh, have a look because i want to have a light wave working fine on uh, morphos as well um, yeah, in uh, OS4 we do as well the mod promotion of the screen, especially for the light wave. The uh, modeler has a way to, to work with the RTG. Let's see if it, nah, yeah, right now it doesn't work here. But there is a way to make it work. So, and the last one I would like to show you is Cinema 4D. Uh, this is available, freely available, because back in 1997, uh, the developers, the Maxon, uh, company, the, Mac, uh, the company that was named as Maxon, um, released a CD-ROM with uh, the last, um, the last issue of uh, Amiga magazine back then released the latest version for Amiga uh, free for everyone to use uh, you can find it and uh, use it of course so let's uh, open a project here um, for example let's see the color text Here, these buttons are not quite visible because of the palette, of course, and um, because also of the upscaler that I'm using, that uh, changes the coloring of the, the image. So, what you can do here, here is the screen of uh, what you create from the camera. So, if you want to change that, you can, there are a couple of buttons here which is move, uh, resize, rotate, and that uh, is about the kinematics. If you have uh, objects that are connected with each other, it's something uh, completely different. So here, for example, you have the move. It changes the way that the camera sees that. and. Uh, bring it closer or further 
like that and also rotate it as you can see uh, on the move movement the Cinema 4D always uh, does uh, these boundary boxes so to uh, reduce the effort on the um, CPU and let's render it resolution 800-600 ok screen mode editor and render all the textures that are used in uh, these uh, demos are um, old textures low, low resolution so the the sky that you see back there it's not the best one that you would have but the items like the letters and uh, the colors are looking quite well because they are not based on textures and the reflection here for example one thing that uh, it was I couldn't find is how you get that uh, window because to do that you have to click to keep pressed the shift button and then select the ray tracing if you can see i don't know if it is visible in the in your screen be beside uh, ray tracing there is a, a small dot <laughs> that's the way that this uh, application shows that there are more things to, to find under uh, this uh, selection otherwise if you don't have the shift button uh, selected and you click on that then it starts with the latest uh, configuration of the of this uh, operation so it has the uh, ray tracing which gets all the lights and all the reflections in mind or you can have a um, wireframe display for example uh, similar uh, request uh, edit of screen render where you get a more simple uh, rendering of the item Yeah, it is uh, pretty fast. Yeah, absolutely, Leveller. Uh, Leveller says that uh, this is pretty fast rendering on Amiga 500, it will take some time, a lot of time. Um, that's why they have uh, different uh, renderings here. Let's see this one and select a better resolution, render. I think this one doesn't take in mind the reflections. I might be wrong. And the the lights. Yeah. You see the reflection is not there from the letters. So those are techniques just to speed up if you want. And especially if you want to uh, just uh, preview, maybe a smaller resolution could be useful. Here you can select the path where to save that if you want to save it in um, the disk. For example, test.ifr or let's say JPEG. Okay, and here is the format of the output. Uh, you will see that there are three different JPEG uh, options JPEG minus, JPEG zero and JPEG plus that means that the JPEG uh, it's the different qualities of JPEG so you can go with the plus if you want to generate something uh, that is final and here the, the, bit, the color bit of the output of the image so if we render 1020 4, 7, 6, 8. but if you don't want to have that uh, to be displayed just to get the the output file you can click here no display render 
which is also speed up a little bit the, the, the rendering because it doesn't need the CPU to, to uh, design the, the screen. So you will see here in a few seconds um, that is finished and we can check the, the image. And also from that request you can select any kind of resolution that you might want to get the result. Um, I, I rendered, for example, uh, 1080p just fine on this uh, this image uh, on this uh, on Cinema 4D, so uh, you can do it. Uh, SLD Snake says uh, you can leave the 500 rendering until the next stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you have uh, this kind of uh, computers, you don't let them render because, uh, of course, it is going to take a lot of time and they are uh, valuable. If it uh, breaks while it is rendering, that's something that is you you won't uh, like, right? So we have here the test. Let me um, sorry, yeah. System applications. Actually, let me see. So in the comment, <laughs> it tells how, many, how much time it takes. And the default tool, let me remove it and see if it appears. So here it is the re ending result. Uh, 1024, 768 uh, resolution. So you can uh, have it like that. Here it is into a file and of course this um, requester for the rendering has a lot of uh, options uh, let me see you can select here to go with manual and put here 1920 1080 for example but if you do that don't forget to change the aspect ratio like that and create your uh, your output image of course if it is bigger it takes more time um, and of course here you can select the shadows the reflections and also if you want to add any uh, anti-aliasing uh, to the image and the amount of, uh, of air sampling uh, i would suggest that these things would be something that you will do to the, the uh, end result of the rendering, right? Not whenever you uh, want to see something really fast, you don't need to, to add all the stuff. And here on filter, you can uh, soften soften or sharpen the, the end result. It's a end filter um, filtering that is added on your image. I would suggest for that to keep it to none because uh, those filters can be added from image effects, for example. So get the end result without filtering, because if you add there soften, it is difficult to remove it later. So get it there without any filtering and um, then go to image effects, load the image and do whatever you want uh, for the filters. So just to, to play a little bit, with uh, Cinema 4D, uh, for me it's it it has a much simpler uh, UI to do stuff. You can uh, switch to different views from this side, from these buttons here, and uh, 3D, which is a perspective uh, way to to see the the scene that you have for example, without moving the, the camera. You see the camera is uh, stable over there. And you can move it wherever you want. 4T, which is, is, you have all the, the, from the top, from the front and from the side, and uh, also the perspective to, to see the, the scene. And it, it works quite well. Of course, in um, more complicated scenes you might see when you you move it 
you might see that uh, some things are not uh, refreshed properly so you can come here in this feather uh, button click it and it refreshes and redraws everything uh, Livelord says absolutely but we all did it long time ago yeah absolutely yeah I remember that I was rendering something to in real 3d one a lot of years ago and I wanted that to be animated so I rendered all the frames and it was something like um, a very very simple uh, item that was uh, spinning around this uh, center and uh, it took something like uh, two days to do nine frames or something like that and uh, at the end the the result because I got the the result with uh, another small utility that I can't find it anymore that creates uh, GIF files from uh, frames uh, so I created an animated uh, GIF back then GIF was uh, the only way to have uh, animation on websites and we put it on a website that I was creating with one of my friends and uh, yeah we had <laughs> a spinning thing created only on Amiga That's, that was crazy Uh, SLT Snake says, yeah, maybe some old animes with uh, Real 3D. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, what else? And uh, you can move, of course, uh, the objects. Here it has object selection where you have a list of all the objects. You select the one that you want, for example, the text from this side. And then if you click the object, okay. If you click the object and one of these buttons, you can move it. You see that right now the, the rendering is not quite well. And the colors were... It changed the color of the item because it is selected. Okay. So right now I moved one of the letters a little bit uh, at the front and bottom. Yeah, this might be uh, something that can be fixed if you go to a different uh, screen mode. Let me see if we can do it. Screen mode. Let's go to uh, this one, eight bit use. Yeah, right now is more visible because it's a, it's a matter of the palette that the screen is using. Okay. So if I want the M, I can get it and move it. You see here in the different views where exactly it is. It is in front of the, the rest of the world, of the world, yeah. And a little bit up, okay. So if we go with this, wow, the... Here it is the M. So let's render that to something smaller. Like that. Let me move this and create that in editor scene. Okay. Remember that the, uh, and we put the, the ground further up anyway. Remember that uh, Cinema 4D doesn't have the locking frame like the light wave does. So if you move the, the camera, for example, then that's the place where it is going to be the camera and this is the one that is going to be on the uh, rendering 
of course you can save the scene to have the latest changes and also one thing that I don't like at all in uh, uh, in Cinema 4D is that you have only one undo so if you change something and you want to undo it if you if you do two changes you can undo only the, the latest one unfortunately uh, and I haven't seen any way to, to make it uh, work better of course with uh, Cinema 4D you can create animations you can create a lot of stuff let me see if I have an animation that I created a few months ago to show you uh, renders I was experimenting with the <laughs> explosions so as you can see so those are uh, some animations that I created and what else yeah things to experiment and uh, see how it works and um, play with uh, different uh, uh, ways to, to create something um, and uh, what else yeah that's uh, yeah uh, also you can uh, have a view of the materials not this there are a lot of um, uh, the cinema 4d has the idea that every item can, has its own material and there you can set um, a pattern or something or a specific color and there you can set if this if this uh, item if this material is transparent or it is reflective or it is have uh, different um, uh, characteristics which are uh, taken in mind when you do the, uh, the rendering by the renderer of course so uh, and it has also here where is it uh, objects I don't remember right now there is a way to get a window with all the materials that are used let me see if I can find it uh, load plan Is it? Ah, window, yeah, here. Material manager. This one. And then you can go to render roll and you can see a small rendering of the materials. And by double clicking on one of them, you have the uh, information. And you can say that, okay, this four, I want to have this material that is the uh, the clouds and things like that and that's a way to uh, play with uh, the materials on your um, on your scene 
And that's pretty much the things that I wanted to, to talk to you about uh, today. Um, I would like to tell you that give it a try, create something interesting on your uh, Morpho system, your Amiga system or whatever you would like to, uh, to use. Aris Amiga says, can you, uh, uh, can you add the new materials? Absolutely. And you can create your own materials at any time. For example, you can uh, go here, material, new. Then you have this new material here and you can say that uh, this is RGB. So I want to have that uh, red and it's going to be a little bit of plastic. So it's going to reflect the, the color like that or it's going to be metal so it's going to be harder on reflecting the color the, the the light and you can say then that this item is going to have this material the, the way to do it is material selection new and now this item the four has that material if we go and do uh, a rendering I hope that it's going to come up as a plastic red, something that we created right now here, as you can see. And um, of course you can change the name, uh, rename and say that is plastic red. And also uh, you can save this material, save us, as a separated file if you want to use it in different scenes as well. Yeah, you have a, a lot of uh, options to do dif uh, a lot of different things. So uh, just uh, as a final word, um, there are a lot of different applications. Some of them are working quite well, some of them not so quite well. Uh, it's up to you to select which one is better for you. Uh, and um, give it some time to, to learn how it works. The Cinema 4D, for example, is um, an application that has a lot of um, features to create a lot of uh, interesting stuff. Um, unfortunately, there is no English uh, manual anywhere, uh, only a German one. I, I have uh, started uh, translating the German uh, manual to English, but I don't speak at all German, so I'm using uh, automated translation for that and try to um, do it in a way that it, uh, the, the outcome, the result makes a little bit of sense <laughs> for us. And uh, that uh, gives a little bit of the context of what uh, every button uh, does. There is a guy that has the English manuals and he, he said that he's going to scan them. I don't know if, uh, what is the stage of this, uh, this work, but it's a big work uh, because the um, a manual for the Cinema 4D uh, version 2 is something like uh, 400, 500 uh, pages. So it, this is a lot of work. If you would like to have a look at the, um, the translated uh, English manuals that I'm creating, uh, you can go to git.volcero.gr git.volcero.gr And let me show you where you can find it. Explore um, Cinema 4D Docs. The, the Cinema 4D is translated, um, the whole, um, for the version 4 is completed uh, the translation with the images added. The version 2 is more than the half already translated. You can select, for example, the object bar and 
from here you can see all the, uh, the translation in different sections about the uh, the object bar of the uh, Cinema 4D. Unfortunately, some uh, German that is included in the image, uh, they are not uh, translated yet. I plan to create new screenshots and change the, the labels, but you can see some uh, of the uh, document. Uh, all the document is uh, already there translated with all the images. And also, in uh, what I plan to do is wherever I can because it is a lot of work to do it wherever I can to to add the new images I will show you in uh, version 4 I'm taking new screenshots and try to, to make it as uh, uh, to look as good as possible For example, this image is brand new. Uh, this image is brand new, and they are uh, similar to the ones that the original manual has. So you can see that uh, there is a way to make it um, look better. And that's but this is uh, the old one from the scanned uh, manual. And uh, yeah. Uh, that's one thing that I'm creating. And also, don't forget, uh, Amiga Art Contest 2022. Uh, you can find information at amigaartwork.com. I hope so. Yeah. Amigaartwork.com. You can create something interesting and put it there for uh, the competition, the contest, but actually for having fun. That's the, the only reason why we do uh, most of the things, right? To have fun with uh, our machines. And yeah, that's pretty much uh, all I had to, to, to show you today. I don't know. I hope that uh, you found something interesting here and uh, you learned something new. And um, before we close, I would like to, to thank you all for being here with me today. And also thank uh, all my supporters at uh, the coffee page that I have. Uh, in case you like what you see in my streams and uh, you use the applications that I developed for Amiga OS 3, Amiga OS 4 and Morphos, Op, uh, which are uh, all uh, open source. You can support me on coffee slash Volcero. Uh, that's a web page where you can find me. And uh, also uh, have in mind that at the end of each uh, month, 50% uh, of the donations that I collect uh, are going to back to the community and are donated to another uh, developer, to another uh, website that has to do with the Amiga community. So by supporting me, you support also other uh, members of our community that uh, develop uh, things for our uh, beloved uh, computers. And uh, yeah, I would like uh, to thank uh, mainly my uh, Amiga pals we it's uh, support me every month with uh, their donation and uh, you can be also in, in that uh, position if you want and uh, those are uh, breed uh, christopher white daniel zedlika emek and liverlord uh, recently i created a new uh, monthly category uh, with uh, just uh, three euros to buy me every month a coffee to keep me awake uh, at night uh, to create all this stuff. I hope you liked what you saw here today.